Yashar, Jasher, 14. In those days, there was in the land of Shinar a wise man who had understanding in all wisdom and of a beautiful appearance, but he was poor and indigent. His name was Rikeon, and he was hard set to support himself. And he resolved to go to Mitzrayim, to Osiris, the son of Anamim, king of Mitzrayim, to show the king his wisdom. For perhaps he might find grace in his sight to raise him up and give him maintenance. And Rikayan did so. And when Rikayan came to Mitzrayim, he asked the inhabitants of Mitzrayim concerning the king. And the inhabitants of Mitzrayim told him the custom of the king of Mitzrayim, for it was then the custom of the king of Mitzrayim that he went from his royal palace and was seen abroad only one day in the year. And after that, the king would return to his palace to remain there. And on the day when the king went forth, he passed judgment in the land. And everyone having a suit came before the king that day to obtain his request. And when Rikayan heard of the custom in Mitzrayim and that he could not come into the presence of the king, he grieved greatly and was very sorrowful. And in the evening, Rikayan went out and found a house in ruins, formerly a bakehouse in Mitzrayim, and he abode there all night in bitterness of soul and pinched with hunger, and sleep was removed from his eyes. And Rikayan considered within himself what he should do in the town until the king made his appearance, and how he might maintain himself there. And he rose in the morning and walked about and met in his way those who sold vegetables and various sorts of seed with which they supplied the inhabitants. And Rikayon wished to do the same in order to get a maintenance in the city, but he was unacquainted with the custom of the people, and he was like a blind man among them. And he went and obtained vegetables to sell them for his support. And the rabble assembled about him and ridiculed him and took his vegetables from him and left him nothing. And he rose up from there in bitterness of soul and went sighing to the bakehouse in which he had remained all the night before. And 
he slept there the second night. And on that night, again, he reasoned within himself how he could save himself from starvation, and he devised a scheme how to act. And he rose up in the morning and acted ingeniously and went and hired 30 strong men of the rabble carrying their war instruments in their hands and he led them to the top of the Mitzri sepulcher and he placed them there and he commanded them saying thus says the king strengthen yourselves and be valiant men and let no man be buried here until 200 pieces of silver be given and then he may be buried and those men did according to the order of Rike Yan to the people of Mitzrayim the whole of that year. And in eight months' time, Rike Yan and his men gathered great riches of silver and gold, and Rike Yan took a great quantity of horses and other animals, and he hired more men, and he gave them horses, and they remained with him. And when the year came round, at the time the king went forth into the town, all the inhabitants of Mitzrayim assembled together to speak to him concerning the work of Rikayan and his men. And the king went forth on the appointed day, and all the Mitzrayim came before him and cried unto him, saying, May the king live forever. What is this thing you do in the town to your servants, not to suffer a dead body to be buried until so much silver and gold be given? Was there ever the like unto this done in the whole earth from the days of former kings, yea, even from the days of Adam unto this day, that the dead should not be buried? only for a set price? We know it to be the custom of kings to take a yearly tax from the living. But you do not only do this, but from the dead also you exact a tax day by day. Now, O king, we can no more bear this, for the whole city is ruined on this account, and do you not know it? And when the king heard all that they had spoken, he was very wroth, and his anger burned within him at this affair, for he had not, rather, for he had known nothing of it. And the king said, Who and where is he that dares to do this wicked thing in my land without my command? Surely you will tell me. And they told him all the works of Rikayan and his men. And the king's anger was aroused. And he ordered Rikayan and his men to be brought 
before him. And Rikeyan took about a thousand children, sons and daughters, and clothed them in silk and embroidery. And he set them upon horses and sent them to the king by means of his men. And he also took a great quantity of silver and gold and precious stones and a strong and beautiful horse as a present for the king with which he came before the king and bowed down to the king rather to the earth before him and the king his servants and all the inhabitants of Mitzrayim wondered at the work of Rikeyan, and they saw his riches and the present that he had brought to the king. And it greatly pleased the king, and he wondered at it. And when Rikeyan sat before him, the king asked him concerning all his works, and Rikeyan spoke all his words wisely before the king. His servants and all the inhabitants of Mitzrayim. And when the king heard the words of Rikeyan and his wisdom, Rikeyan found grace in his sight, and he met with grace and kindness from all the servants of the king and from all the inhabitants of Mitzrayim on account of his wisdom and excellent speeches. And from that time, they loved him exceedingly. And the king answered and said to Rikeyan, your name shall no more be called Rikeyan, but Pharaoh shall be your name, since you did exact a tax from the dead. And he called his name Pharaoh. And the king and his subjects loved Rikeyan for his wisdom, and they consulted with all the inhabitants of Mitzrayim to make him prefect under the king. And all the inhabitants of Mitzrayim and its wise men did so. And it was made a law in Mitzrayim. And they made Rikeyan Pharaoh prefect under Osiris, king of Mitzrayim, and Rikeyan Pharaoh governed over Mitzrayim, daily administering justice to the whole city. But Osiris the king would judge the people of the land one day in the year when he went out to make his appearance. And Rikeyan Pharaoh cunningly usurped the government of Mitzrayim, and he exacted a tax from all the inhabitants of Mitzrayim. And all the inhabitants of Mitzrayim greatly loved Rikeyan Pharaoh. And they made a decree to call every king that should reign over them and their seed in Mitzrayim, Pharaoh. Therefore, all the kings that reigned in Mitzrayim from that time forward were called Pharaoh unto this day.